And we'll have a riot that makes last night's riot look like a picnic. Woo! Ah! He likes fast cars and flashy women. And sometimes he steals them both. Get down! Every time a Chicano goes for his wallet, he's gunned down by some frightened policemen. Hey, you know what they say down at the beach, don't you, Charlie? No ways, no right. Tarzan woman, man. Nothing but a headache. Nothing but a problem. Man. Ay! Que mola a mano, man. Look at that. Man. Nice car, man. Bad. Capital B. <laughs> you guys like her, huh? Clean. Well, you can have her, man. <laughs> you gonna fill it up? No, man. You got a mechanic? Yeah. Let me talk to him, okay? No, I left at 6 o'clock. Be back tomorrow at 8.30. Gracias, senor, man. <laughs> Hey, you guys know anything about cars, huh? This boy. A little. Oh, yeah? A little, huh? What about, uh, oh, let's say $100, huh? Huh? Did you fix the car, huh? Hey, you got a deal. Man, you quick, huh? Yeah. Well, you better open the door for me. Yeah, I'll get you coffee if you want. I might want some. You know what you're doing, right? Yeah, start it up. OK, Here you go. Distributor can. Cut it! Cut it! Que passa com Carlos? Né? Cara, não está. Cabrão, né? Try it again. Ah! Sorry, man. It, this, she looks fried. What a genius, huh? Yeah, you keep the hundred, all right? Hey, 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 quick. Cuidado, man. Yeah, you keep the hundred, okay? 
You sure? Of course he's sure. What are you talking about? Easy, man. You keep it. And, uh, you know, maybe you can give us a ride, OK? OK. All right, man. Cheerity. Vamos, man. Let's get out of here. Let's go get some more beer. My car right here, man. Okay. 6 out of 3, 6 out of 44 on Taxi. 7 out of 43, it's 211 silent. 6 to 1, he runs it. 7 out of 43. What'd you call that, partner? Rolling stop, shall we? This is 381. We're code 6 with a Chevy Impala. License 1, Paula, Charlie, Edward, 421. Boyle Heights, corner of Stone Court and Overhill. Come on, Sonny, just tell him who your dad is. Hello, officer. I'm gonna take a look at your license. Yes, sir. You see that stop sign back there, Antonio? Uh, no, sir. No, I didn't. You're not legally blind, are you? <laughs> no, no, sir, I'm not. Well, then I'm going to have to give you a ticket. Let me see your registration. Yes, sir. You been drinking, Antonio? No, sir, not me. OK, everybody, out of the car. went down. Who was it? Conrad and Bennett. Conrad's dead and Bennett looks bad. And we've got three dead suspects. We don't know what the hell happened. OK, put a man on the black and white, one on the Chevrolet. Seal off the entire area. Set up search teams, do a complete sweep. If you find anything, don't touch it, put a man on it. They better get a log started. Right. You know, when we got here, there were a dozen guys back there. Now there's two dozen. One thing we sure don't need is a major 415. We're gonna need the whole damn watch to cover this. Well, let's piece this thing together, huh? What are his chances? Well, he's lost a lot of blood. He thought he was dead when we got here. Where's his badge? I don't know. I never saw it. You ride with him to the hospital. If he says anything, write it down and get back to me immediately. Understand? Yes, sir. Hunter? Yeah? This kid's still alive. Damn shame. Knock that off. Put him in the wagon along with Bennett. Yes, sir. Sergeant? Sergeant. Sandra Browning, KCPY yeah, News. How, how you doing? The officer says you're in charge. Sure here. am. Is it true that the boy shot here this evening were unarmed? I uh, listen, I don't have the time. Excuse me. Thank you. Sergeant. Sergeant, are you aware that two of the boys were shot in the back while lying face down on the ground? Was this an execution? You want to tell him to shut that off for me? You haven't answered my question, Sergeant. Ms. Browning, you're interfering with the police officer's investigation of a homicide. If you continue to harass me, I'm going to arrest you and him. My opponent wants you to think of me as a Chicano. 
Since I am, this is one time he's right. <laughs> he would like you to believe that I have special interests, Chicano interests. The illiteracy of our young people, crime, unemployment. But these are not issues confined to the barrio. They transcend the boundaries of race, yet my opponent refuses to address them. Perhaps he can afford not to. The people of this city cannot. Together on election day, we can make a difference. Thank you. Your son's been taken to the hospital. Sir, it was a reporter who called. He saw Tony wheeled in, that's all. Come on. Someone definitely left here standing up. Yeah, that explains Bennett's missing gun and badge. Also explains the ancient police proverb that where there's press, there's brass. <laughs> I just talked to the hospital. That young Hispanic kid taken in with Bennett was Councilman Alandro's son. Needless to say, with Alandro involved, things are gonna get very sticky. You two are gonna have to do a thorough job. Well, Commander, we always do a thorough job, regardless of whose son is involved. Whether you like it or not, this department is now on display. The press is gonna have a field day with this. Two unarmed Hispanics shot in the back by white police officers. I don't have to tell you that community relations in this part of town is strained enough as it is. I'll be sure to tell that to Conrad's wife. Hey! Hey! Get that under control, Sergeant. Yeah, where are you running to? You're such a big target, I tell you every time. It don't hurt no more. It just, it feel like I got hair condition. <coughs> Compadre, I am dying. You're you got to get me to a hospital. Be reasonable, amigo. I can't take you to a hospital. You can't leave me here, man. If they find you alive, you tell them everything. Please. Ay, Benito, it's funny, huh? After all the things we've been through, for it to come to this. No, sir. No. Councilman, do you think your son's shooting was racially motivated? Do you have any comment, Councilman? What? If your son's near death, will it affect your campaign? Do you think about you have a comment? Councilman, is there anything that you want to say about... All right, Evelyn. Well, keep us posted on that, would you? Yeah, we're at the hospital. Thank you. Well, we've received two more bomb threats at the station, and they have burned, in fact, two more black and whites. We have an entire watch out there. Have Bowen declare a tactical alert. Okay. Councilman, right. well, I've arranged for a room where we can talk. Won't be necessary, Commander. What happened? Your son was pulled over for a moving violation. Apparently, he and the other two suspects were shot accidentally. Suspects? Suspected of what? Well, we don't have all the facts yet. Why is it every time a Chicano goes for his wallet, he's gunned down by some frightened policeman? That's just not the case. I want to see my son. Commander, Commander, Commander we understand you have a riot on your hands. What can you tell no, us? No, no, we, we don't have a riot. We are not even close to a riot. What we have here is a, is a misunderstanding, apparently. Uh, yes, my uh, son was just brought in here. His name is Antonio Elanto. Yes, Councilman. Uh, he's in ICU. Intensive care? Yes. Uh, well, do you know how serious his injuries are? No, I'm sorry, I don't. But Dr. Eller will come out and talk to you just as soon as he can. In the meantime, is there anything I can do for you? No, uh... Well, why don't you have a seat in our waiting room over there? Thank you. Dr. Elias to emergency room stat. Dr. Elias to emergency 
His father's over there waiting for you. Councilman Alondro? Yes. Uh, I'm Dr. Ellard. Oh, uh, my son, how is he? I'm afraid there's nothing we could do. Oh. The bullet entered his chest and his heart and his left lung were irreparably damaged. We did everything possible. Okay. Uh, may I see him? Yes. Uh, of course. Hi, Antonio. Hi, mi hijo. <laughs> <laughs> they won't get away with this, Tommy. I swear to you. I won't rest until they pay for what they've done to you. Remember, you're not the first team, you're support. So make sure you coordinate your sweep with the units already on the scene. Now, Rawlings is in charge of Sector 1, Keelan is in 2, Abez is in 3, and Seneca, you've got 4. Now, make sure your men have masks. We had to use gas, and some of it's still floating around. Be careful. That's a very volatile situation out there. I cannot emphasize that enough. Now, we want our presence felt out there, but remember, you're targets, so watch your backs, all right? OK, take off. Brother. We have something, Charlie. A report came in a couple of hours ago. There was gunfire down near the river about a mile away from the shooting, and they found this guy, Benito Canillo. He was shot twice, although we have three witnesses that claim they only heard one shot. So you think he was wounded before he got to the river? Yeah, there's no way the guy could have gotten there by himself. Now, Canillo had a known associate, a Santiago Munez. They're Mariolitos. They were serving a murder prison term in Havana when Castro sent them over here as part of the amnesty deal back in 80. They did a six-year stretch in a Texas penitentiary for armed robbery, and for the last two years, they've been working strong arm for Louis Garrison in Las Vegas. Where'd you get all this stuff? Las Vegas police. Garrison's dead. Munez shot him today in an argument in a bar at 12.30. There were witnesses, but Munez got away. And you know, it only takes five hours to get here from Vegas. What do these two have to do with those kids? We don't know. Can you place Munoz and Canio at the scene of the shooting? Nope. The blood we found outside the kid's car on the ground is the same type as uh, Canio's, but we can't prove it's his. What about fingerprints on the car? Nothing. Now, Canio was wearing gloves. Perhaps Munoz was also. Well, nobody's going to believe this story unless you find Munoz and some physical evidence that puts him at the scene of the crime. Bennett just got out of surgery. He's stable. <sighs> Thank God. Bowen. Uh, yes, sir. Have Henderson bring me down a cot, will you? You got it. Put it on APB on Munez. You find him, we have a chance to get this thing under control. You people ever sleep. Come on, Sporty, let me in. It's important. Give me a handle on this guy, Nicole. Las Vegas police says he likes fast cars and flashy women. And sometimes he steals them both. What's he into? Shooting cops. Last night, Boyle Heights. That's right. He even stole one of the officers' badge and gun. 
But I can't figure it. What was he doing with Elandro's boy? Sporty, if I find him, I'll ask him. Let me tell you something. If you find this guy, I guarantee you that the chief is going to give you a medal personally. Uh, no, 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 McCall. That is the kind of notoriety I will go to my grave avoiding. But for you, I'll get the word out before breakfast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the councilman won't be answering any questions. Please, please, no questions right now, please. He'll be making a statement momentarily. Ladies, please. Last night, three outstanding young men were killed in cold blood. One of them was my son. Get in. Oh, hey, you didn't get no offer. I didn't do nothing. Either you get in, I come out and get you. I thought I knew every vice cop west of Pomona. Got a new one now, baby. This tragedy is not mine alone. The barrio is a troubled community. Our young people are our hope for the future. Last night, that future was put in doubt by the sound of police gunfire, a sound heard all too frequently in the Hispanic community. I make this pledge to the memory of Ricardo Higueras, Angel Pavón, my son Antonio, and all those whose efforts have elected me to public office. I will fight I will fight until the institution responsible for their deaths is brought to justice. Okay, Mr. Alondro, do you have any idea at all what your son could have been doing last night? That's a strange question. You don't know what he was doing, and yet you killed him. Look, we think that there was two armed fugitives in the car with him when he was pulled over last night. Now, our preliminary report shows that your son was shot by accident. Fugitives, yes. Do you really expect me to believe that? Now, just, just a minute, tell me, Sergeant. How do you think two fugitives ended up in that car with my son and his friends on their way home from a soccer game. I mean, do you have anything to back up that statement, Daniel? No, I don't know. But please don't forget, a police officer is dead. Another one is near death. Oh, please, please. I've got a 17-year-old son lying in the morgue with that cop's bullet in his chest. First you kill my son. Now you come here with some makeshift story, but what's the... Why? What, to help you justify it? Is that... Mr. Melondo, we're just trying to find the truth in this thing. Yeah, the truth. Does that scare you? Oh, just, just get out. 
Look, Mr. Alano, you cannot continue to make speeches like that, to rile the people of this city up. It's not going to bring your son back. Get out. Please, get out. Get out. Put it down. I told you. I told you to stay away from that bomb. Didn't I? Huh? Get stupid, eh? Don't you ever listen, huh? Huh? Now listen and listen good. I'm going out on business. Police business. If you even look out a window, when I get back, I'll rip your heart out. No, I will. Don't you? You be a good little muchacha. And maybe when I come back, we play house some more, eh? Hi, mommy. Te veo, mommy, eh? Forget, huh? No peeky out the window, huh? <laughs> An estimated 500 rioters battled policemen last night after the tragic shooting death of three unarmed Hispanic teenagers by two members of the Metro PD. One of the boys was Councilman Michael Elandro's son. The three youths were buried today at St. Agnes Cemetery, where more than 100 mourners joined the parents of the slain boys. Councilman Elandro has made a formal request to the district attorney to initiate a grand jury investigation into the shooting. The police motto, to protect and serve, must be transformed from paint on the outside of a city patrol car to something the police feel in their hearts. They must be accountable. At the moment, the streets of Boyle Heights are quiet after last night's conflict. How long they'll remain that way in light of Elandro's charges and the police department's inability to explain the shootings is anyone's guess. Turn it off. And on the lighter side of the news today, there hasn't been a pit bull attack in eight weeks. After your visit to the councilman's office this morning, I'm holding you responsible for his uncooperative attitude. Tact and diplomacy are part of a professional image, or didn't you know that? No, I knew that, Commander, but I have a murder case to solve. And in doing so, I suggest you walk the line. One more insensitive move, and we could have a riot that makes last night's riot look like a picnic. Commander Kane, would you like for us to... What I would like is for all press inquiries and all information to be channeled through my office. I believe that was my last directive, wasn't it, Captain? Yes, sir, it was. Now that the councilman has asked for a grand jury investigation, all the facts must be treated as confidential. No one but me makes any statements. You know, it really is too bad he failed his fireman's test. Don't make waves, Hunter. Hey, you know what they say down at the beach, don't you, Charlie? No waves, no ride. Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for the officer in charge of the murders in Boyle Heights. Sergeant Hunter? Yep. Um, a, a couple of guys in a Corvette broke down in my station last night. Mm -hmm. They spoke Spanish. I think, I think they were Cuban. Those kids that got killed in Boyle Heights, they were there too. They gave the guys from the Corvette a ride. Does that look like them? Yeah, I think that's them. You think that's them? Sit down, I want to talk to you. What are you talking about? 
talking about? Commander gave specific orders not to talk to Alondro. You give Kane a reason, he'll suspend you. Look, if Alondro understands how his son wound up in that car with Munez, perhaps he'll help keep the people off the streets. All right, maybe I ought to go with you. No, 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 no. I'll go alone. This way, if Alondro doesn't listen to me, there'll be somebody left to work this case. OK, look, I'll go over to SID and uh, see if they have anything off of Munez's Corvette. And if you get something, call me. Say so if you see that sucker, you let me know, okay? All right. Ow! Hello, ladies. How's business? You still interested in that dude you told me about this morning? You got something? I know you remember what you promised me now, don't you? Do I look like an amnesiac to you, woman? I'm just making sure, you know, because the last guy hey, I hey, met with y'all. Hey. Everybody had... knows that Sporty James always makes good on his deals. Now, what you got for me? Okay. Go ahead. Tell him what you told me. The guy with the badge picked me up this morning. A cop? I don't think so. You and me gonna make a little phone call, Mom. Uh, you, you got a quarter? Have anything yet, Ruben? We've lifted a few prints, but nothing that matches Alondro's kid or his friends. What about Munez? Didi, if he was in this car, he was wearing gloves. Ruben? I think I got a new one. Give me the tape. Different, all right. Index cards, please. No, next. It's a match. Who's is it? Ilandro's son. L-56, L-56, come in, please. This is L-57. L-56, go ahead. Hunter, Ilandro's son was definitely at the gas station. Ruben just pulled a set of his prints right off of Munez's hood. Good work, partner. I'll call you later. L-56 out. So you can't go in without an appointment? I please, do sir. understand that. Sir. I'd, I'd like to talk to you just for a second. What in the hell do you think you're doing? After his soccer game, your son went to a gas station. There he met two men. He gave them a ride. He did not know that they were armed fugitives. Now, the gas station attendant was a witness to that. Your son was just being a good Samaritan. Well, I appreciate you bringing me this dubious bit of information, Sergeant, but that still does not account for what happened. My son was unarmed when he was shot. His two friends were lying face down on the ground when they were shot in the back. Now, have you an explanation for that? No, I don't. Not yet. I'm working on that. This was not police brutality. And I'll bet you, when we look into this, it had nothing to do with race. You've got to be more responsible for what you're telling people out there. You're inciting a riot. Now, nobody can change what has happened. We can't bring your son back, unfortunately. But you do have the power to change things. You can keep things from getting worse. What would your son want? He would want to be alive. Sergeant McCall, there's a sporty James on the phone for you.
It's over there. Thanks. Yeah, Sporty? Where have you been? I have been looking all over creation for you. Do you have something for me? I think I have found Mounier. Where? He is at an apartment on Crenshaw and Baltic. Thanks. L-56, this is L-90. We're all set. We've got a landline open to the station. Here he comes. Drop it! Drop it or she dies! Drop it! Come on. Move it back. Move it back. L56. All units have a 187 suspect last seen on foot at Crenshaw Boulevard headed for Baltic. Hispanic male wearing blue sports coat. Considered armed and dangerous. L56 out. Ten block perimeter on this place to get an air unit in here. That was Bowen. Took in a lot of water, but he'll be all right. What happened? I was right on his tail and I lost it. Maybe he stole a car. No, I didn't have time. A damn bus. <laughs> Oh, 
ID this guy. A cop convention. Looking for a Latino man with a blue sport coat, got on a ways back? The other cop. Yeah, the other cop. Where'd he get off? Back there at 43rd and Fig. I think he headed for the motel on the corner. $12 an hour, 36 all day. Looking for a Latino man in a blue sport coat. You seen him? He's here, but he ain't here. What does that mean? That means he's in 14, but he ain't in 14. So where is he? He said he wanted a bottle of booze, so I sent him over there. I watched him walk down there about five minutes ago. OK, thanks. What is that little market over there? I'm going in. Call the cavalry. Watch your rear. I'll get there as soon as I can. That is why I thought it important that I come here to police headquarters in order to express my sincere hope that together we can stop these riots. Councilman, don't you think that just about ends the possibility of your being elected mayor? After all, the majority of your support comes from the Hispanic community, a community outraged by the very people you seem to be apologizing to. Well, in this case, Ms. Pedrosa, an apology would not be out of order. Councilman, I find it strange that you would choose this particular district to make that sort of statement. Are you apologizing to the people responsible for your son's death? Apparently, Miss Browning, you were not listening to what I said. My son picked up two hardened criminals. These men were responsible for my son's death and the shooting of two police officers, one of whom is dead and the other in critical condition. This is not, I repeat, not a race issue. And I'm here to make that clear. Council, Council, no, just, just, just please. I vowed after my son's death to find the truth. Now, those who seek the truth and find it must be prepared to face it. I'd rather lose this election than promote a lie that would lead to more violence and bloodshed. Thank you. One more question, Councilman. Well, that just about ends a promising political career. Maybe. Sounds like good PR. Marler, please call the operator. Dr. Marler, please call the operator. Hello, Councilman. Well, hello, Sergeant. I want to thank you for the speech you made last week. I wish I could have been there. Well, you didn't miss anything. 
I did what I had to do. I just uh, told him the facts. I understand you've gone up six points in the polls. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. I thought I was committing political suicide. But you didn't. Thanks again. Thank you. Remember to vote. So what do you think this stuff is, anyway? It's spinach. It's cream spinach. This is good for you. This will give you strength. It'll make you get better faster. It has iron in it. Hi, group. Hey. Hey, Hunter. Hi, Bennett. How you doing? OK. You know who was just here to see me? Our next mayor, Councilman Alondra. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pretty yeah, good, yeah. huh? Uh, I got your badge back for you. How about that? Congratulations. That's great, Hunter. Thanks a lot. Yeah, when are you getting out of here? Please. Three days with good behavior. And good nutrition. Do what the doctor says and eat your spinach, all right? We gotta go. See you later. Good luck. Adios. I'm glad he's feeling better. Feeling better? How could you feel better eating that garbage food? If I had to rely on getting better in this hospital eating that food, I'd be in the morgue. What are you talking about? The hospital plans a nutritional meal like that for you to eat so you'll get better. Let me tell you something about planning a nutritional meal. They don't know what they're doing in hospitals nutritionally. Is that right? Well, what would you serve? Mexican food? Well, let me tell you something, Ms. Weisenheimer. I knew a guy who was dumb enough to ride his daughter's skateboard. He broke both bones in his lower leg. We tied a jalapeno pepper behind his knee and he got better. <laughs> 